Of course, I got right up and onto the computer. While I was waiting for the internet connection to warm up, I got out my favorite fizzing vitamin C drink. I highly recommend this. It's very tasty. It comes in tropical fruit, which is this. Uh, also raspberry, lemon, lime, citrus, cranberry, just a variety of flavors. Mmm, very good. Well, I got my stuff together, and yes, it took me three and a half hours to get ready. I just really didn't want to go to court, but what can you do? It was very dark, of course, when I left. This is pretty much what it looked like the whole way there, except for a couple of these. When I stopped to get gas, there was the cutest thing to take home. But finally, the dawn. I got where I was going about 40 minutes early. This was good because I had to find a ladies room and parking and all of that. Well, first of all, the parking garage, it said uh, public parking on the sign. But when I got into it and went to get the ticket, it said employee entrance only, cash only. I was not an employee and I didn't have any cash. Yeah, I looked behind me and there's this long line of people queuing up behind me and I couldn't back up so I pressed the button, took the ticket and drove on into the garage and found a place to park and thought well I'll just straighten it out later. I'll get some cash somewhere and straighten it out. Of course I don't have any footage of the actual court building inside or outside because you're not allowed to have cameras and I figured that would be the case. They had cubby holes for you to check your cameras and your camera phones, so I was glad I hadn't even brought mine in. I just left it in the van. There was security. It was the first time I'd ever been wanted that I can recall. So I got up to the floor. I rode these escalators up to the floor, and a very nice woman told me what uh, courtroom I would be in and gave me directions down the hall, and she said, the courtrooms are shaped like a spaceship. And, uh... It was kind of when I got in there, almost like, I don't know, I've never been in a spaceship, but I guess from TV shows. But I realized how much like an airport that courthouse was. I mean, you walked in and there was that security, just very strict security, which is good. And then you go up the escalators and there's information desks and you look up and there's monitors that show instead of departure and arrival times they have the alphabetical order uh, last names for the cases and the courtrooms that you're in and even the seats that you waited outside of the courtrooms for them to open the door uh, they look like an airport a very posh airport but an airport so they opened the doors right on time and we all went in and uh, the bailiff told us to stand. It was just like TV. And um, they called one court case before me, but they weren't there. And so then they called mine. And uh, his lawyer, my husband's lawyer, now ex-husband's lawyer, got up. And uh, didn't know I was his wife. Uh, had So anyway, she was talking to the judge like I wasn't there. Like we served her down you know, state, because he filed four hours away from where we lived. So I drove all the way up there to find out what was going on with this. Just like the paper said, two minutes. Uh, it was over. The judge said, well, if it's uncontested, uh, he'd sign the papers and it would be done. And so uh, we got out of there, his lawyer and I. I turned around and went down the hall to the ladies' room again. And on the way, just like an airport, it really made me nervous because there was this overstuffed, half open, kind of popping open from being overstuffed uh, briefcase, black padded briefcase. And it was just sitting there like it had been abandoned. And I thought, oh no. Uh, and who would abandon what lawyer, what person would abandon a briefcase with all their papers in it? And so I prayed about it and went on to the ladies room 
and survived. I got back out. And just as I was walking by, the person to whom it belonged came and picked up the briefcase. I breathed this huge sigh of relief. But I am just exhausted and emotionally drained, and I have to find cash. So I, of course, go the wrong way. Long story short, I started the right way, but knowing how bad my sense of direction usually is, I turned around and went the wrong way. I guess my sense of direction is getting better. I got to the end of the road and realized my mistake and thought, well, seeing I've come this far, maybe it'd just be better. No, it wasn't better. Well, I don't know. I ended up going through this peaceful, beautiful residential area with flowers and kittens. One looked just like the one at the rest stop, just like could have been its brother or its cousin. Orange, cute as a button, crying at me the same way. Uh, there were birds and squirrels and flowers and I probably needed that. And I ended up walking about a mile through that area before I got to the main street, the main road that I recognized. By this time, though, I realized that I have an answer to prayer. The night before, a friend had called and asked me to come drive her someplace. And when I found out where she was and where she needed to go, I said, oh, you're only about just less than a mile, a mile or less than a mile from where you need to be. I said, it'll be about an hour round trip for me to come and get you and drive you where you need to go and come home. And I said, you can be there if you start walking now before I even get there to pick you up. And she didn't want to because it was getting dark. It wasn't dark yet. By the time it was dark, she would be there. And I would have walked it. I didn't feel bad asking her to do that. And uh, she didn't want to and hung up upset. And I prayed. I was thinking, oh, Lord, did I do the right thing? And now here I am stuck walking. I get a mile walking and I have blisters already. I asked directions and I have another mile to go approximately. It was actually about seven-tenths of a mile to the bank. And then, well, almost you know three-tenths of a mile back to the building where I needed to go and, uh, and then get the van out of the garage. But by the time I got into the van, I uh, took off my shoes and surveyed the damage. Yeah, dried blood. I realized that even with the blisters, ew, even how my heart sank a bit when I realized how much further it was going to be when I'd already walked over a mile, I realized that even with all that, I would never have asked someone to drive an hour round trip to drive me those seven tenths of a mile. It really was a gorgeous day, weather-wise. And I had so many evidences of God's thoughts toward me and His care. Just the strength He gave me to drive on three and a half hours of sleep all that way, about eight hours there and back. That was amazing to me because I, I need sleep. When I saw the kittens, uh, the beautiful walk, that it wasn't pouring rain when I had to walk all that way to get the money to the van out of the garage. I bought batteries for my camera since it wasn't working right and it seemed to be draining them quickly. I bought some that were on sale, but I was in such a state that I left and, and didn't realize that I had paid full price, but then the camera wouldn't work. And so I went back and saw that the batteries were on sale and I got a good amount of money back. They helped me get the batteries to work, so that, I, uh, I just felt cared for.